anyway, by giving it a, a, a numeric value in terms of fiat, some people think that, that, that I'm betraying the system because of, of giving a fiat monetary value to silver. But well, it's really what? the market price, isn't it? Isn't that what you're saying when you give it a monetary value? You know, if an ounce of uh, silver at current prices is worth 420 pesos, for example. Yes, uh, well, well there's a, I have a friend whose name I will not mention who criticizes me because he says, he feels that it's an emotional thing that gold or silver should not be associated with the scum of the earth, which is fiat, you see? But I say, well, people, that's what people are using all over the world. We have to introduce a silver coin into that system so that we can subvert the system. I see. We so have to, the we, step is that people right now are calculating prices and goods and services in terms of paper, pesos, but as they become familiar with one ounce coins, they can start calculating the price of goods and services in terms of ounces. That's true. Like, I'll give you an example. In Mexico, a lot of people, if, if they're going to sell you a car or they're going to sell you a house, they, they will quote, not they will quote you dollars because they're used to the dollar being more stable. So they say, well, uh, don't tell me pesos. Uh, tell me uh, I'm, I'm selling for dollars because they want something that's more stable, you see. Not that it is stable, don't get me wrong, but this has been the custom. And, and the same way people will get to saying later on, look, don't talk to me about so many, so many pesos. How many, how many ounces are you going to give me for my house? Yes. That's what I want to know. And the, or I want so many ounces for this house. Yeah. Ah, we have a, people will have a new reference later on yeah. that comes later. Yeah. You know, I make this point quite often in my presentations, and I think it's, you know, you hit the nail on the head. It's really critically important. People have to calculate the prices of goods and services in terms of weights of, uh, of gold, weights of silver, in order to truly understand what's happening to fiat currency. Uh, and the point I like to make is that an ounce of gold today st still buys the same amount of crude oil it did 50 years ago. Or here's another example. I remember as a young boy growing up in the States in the 1950s that my parents could take the family car to the local gas station. Two silver dollars would fill up the family car. Well, today you can drive to a local gas station and if you use two silver dollars at their market value, not at the one dollar face value oh, on the coin, you can still fill up the family car oh, with, with gasoline. Pretty so good. it shows how the We're getting purchasing there. power. Yeah. Uh -huh. But it's key that people have to understand that you have to use ounces in, or, or grams or whichever you know, measurement you feel comfortable with to calculate the price of goods and services to truly understand how poorly fiat currencies are doing right, in, right. in being uh, able to preserve purchasing power. Well, I think that one way to get there, and one way to help people uh, get to that stage will be by making the available the, the silver money to them. Mm -hmm. Because if there isn't a silver money and they don't have a way of getting these coins, or it's much harder. So we have to put the money, that money into circulation so that people can acquire these coins and begin to think in those terms. But once the coins go into circulation, won't people still rather keep the coin and use the paper? Yes, but I, I call it passive circulation. Ah. What it means is they're circulating, but they're not circulating. They're circulating because you can buy something with them, mm -hmm. but they're really not circulating because people are saving them. Okay. But what I mean is that they, are, they can be used as money at any moment. But people will not choose to do that, except in cases of extreme necessity. The rainy day, when you need That's to dwell, right. dwell or tap into your, yeah. uh, your there's savings. Been, there's been an accident, or you have an emergency, or uh, something unforeseen comes up, you yeah. have a reserve. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's very much the point of view in Asia, for example, and why, for example, India acquires so much gold. Because they see it as a way of preserving wealth and purchasing power over right. long periods of time. Uh -huh. And I guess that's a cultural, traditional thing. Is there a tradition of you know, using silver as a means of saving within Mexico? I think a lot of people have saved silver over the years. Yeah. You find, and, and you find some of the younger people uh, saying, well, my parents had their savings in silver and they mm -hmm. always told me to save in silver. So there's still a memory of, of, the, of, of the silver. Now, I think it's important to, to have 
promoted the, the idea of silver because we don't want people to forget the idea of silver as money. If another generation goes by, Jim, most people will have forgotten mm. entirely that silver was once used as money all over the world. Mm. Uh, it's really very important to keep that memory alive. I, I think that's a very good point. I mean, you know, we're of not too dissimilar of, of an age, and you know, I have in my living memory using silver as a as a young boy in the nineteen yes, fifties. But, but you know, once my generation is gone, nobody will have that experience of actually using any right. precious metal as a form of currency in day to day that's commerce. Right. And I think once that is lost, that will prob probably be harmful to re, um, reintroduce your precious metals once again in the future. I went to Argentina a few years ago. Uh, Argentina, you know, means land of silver. Mm -hmm. And I had to do two, two individuals there who were interested and in, uh, speaking with them and I spoke with other people. Um, the, 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 the people whom I had contacted previously, they were, they were interested in silver. But I found no one else. They've forgotten completely. They've mm. forgotten completely. And yet, when they say, uh, do you have any money? They say, tienes plata. Means, mm. do you have silver? Yeah. But they, they, do, they have never, they've never thought of using silver as money. Even with the hyperinflations that they mm. suffered yes. through over the years? I think they used dollars. They use dollars. As, but, I mean, the dollar is not... <laughs> yes, I know, but... but was, relative to the Argentine was, pace of the dollar was, the, was okay. It was the best they could do. Yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Yes. So it's the best alternative available. Well, it has been, yes. Now, if we give them silver, if we gave the Mexican silver coins, uh, according to uh, my project, there would be a very powerful competitor to the dollar. I mean, the dollar's out of the game. Hmm. It's because it's silver... As money is is incomparably a better a better deal than the dollar. Yeah, I agree with you completely. I'm, as you I know, think, as a matter of fact, Americans would stream into Mexico to buy these coins. Yes, if, if they were money. Silver. Yeah. At the present, they're not money. Yeah, by money, they are money in the sense it can be used for economic calculation to figure the prices of goods and services, but they're not currency. Well, they, yes. In other words, you can't go into a, a McDonald's with that. No. No, that's right. But if they were monetized, you could. If they were granted a monetary value, then you could deposit them in the bank. You could go. You could uh, pay for them anywhere. And to get that yeah. that uh, uh, imprimatur, that government has to do that and enable well, it to circulate. We in have Congress. a bill in the Congress in Mexico. In Mexico, has been. In, we've had. We're now in the third legislature. In other words, they. There have been two sets of, of uh, lawmakers elected since we started working, and we're still hammering on them. But you know what's happening is that the idea of silver has become legitimate. Before it was just sort of like a, well, a strange idea, you know? What is this? That's, what is Mr. Salinas talking about? But now it's become legitimate. Because there have been so many problems with national currencies. There have been lots of, uh, lots of problems. And people have heard about it for a, for a sufficient no, uh, time that now they be, they're get, they're they are becoming accustomed to the idea. Even the lawmakers, I find them more, much more ready to understand because they've heard about it already. Before they were lawmakers, they already heard about it. Yeah. And we lobbying them consti constantly. We're we're educating them, and there will come a point, and I hope it's this year where this thing will come to a vote. And I think there's a good chance it will become a law. Well, that would be really fantastic if that well, were to happen. Well, that would be, the, for me, the, the greatest thing that I could possibly hope for in my life. Well, no, I've, I've had other great things uh, in, in a different, in a different uh, scale of values. But it'll clearly be a crowning achievement over it a couple be, decades of it effort. Would be, it would be... Uh, something to be very happy about indeed. Yeah. Well, that's, wow. that's really good to hear.